Hello everyone, and this is Inayat Mir with my SQL always on scenario. So let's hear this music for a few seconds and read the info on this page number one. All right, moving towards the real work now, where we have one domain and four member servers. In video one, I made all of them actually uh, available with failover clustering feature. Now, you already know if you have seen my first video that a student is a local administrator on all servers and also a domain admin, you can pin SQL Server from Search Menu or SQL Server Configuration Manager from Search Menu. So I am going to log into my SQL Server. I am running SQL 2014. You expand your databases where you click on the plus sign of always on high availability which will not work. The reason is that you have to read the error and go into SQL Server Configuration Manager. So you can also pin. I have done it already to my taskbar. So I am going into my SQL Server Configuration Manager where you left side see the SQL Server Service. Snap in. On the right you click on your instance go to properties and click on always on tab enable it set up a service account it's like one two three so two simple things and then you have to add the password you have to also restart MS SQL server service at least one time after you make this change on each computer. So I am doing a fast forwarding or a quick uh, way. I am doing this because we are doing this on all four computers. Again, you have to look at the SQL server services. Under name, you right click on your instance of your SQL server. That is where you enable your always on availability option, the radio button. Now you close your SQL Server Management Studio, then go back into Management Studio, you are good to go now. Your always on high availability option is available. Go to second server, SRV2, log into the server. Go into your SQL Server Configuration Manager under Always. <coughs> On High Availability tab, you enable the radio button, configure a service account or any account you like to. Confirm it. Add the password, same procedure, so on SRV2 you restart your instance, again you are done. Just validate that you are able to go back in SQL Management Studio and you are able to click on the plus sign of your always on high availability option so you do so we are done in s or v2 let's move into s or v3 logged in i am logged in as a student <coughs> excuse me same procedure properties of the instance 
always on high availability tab same procedure set up a service account or the account which basically will run this instance right from here and apply and click on ok and you do the same procedure restart your ms sql server services this is done just to quickly look at that my management studio has my always on option available so it is good so i am doing on all four servers even i am doing it quickly but it is a good practice for everyone to take a look on that have you enable this on all four nodes so this is a four node cluster which we did set up in video number one so i am on video number two or part two <coughs> now you know what i am doing so i don't have to explain anymore because it is the same procedure you have to repeat on all four servers and there is no way that you get lost on it very straightforward very simple procedure so that is a first condition which you are going to meet right now so i am restarting my sql instance services so we are good to go actually this part is done we are just verifying my uh, fourth server that we are able to access always on high availability group going back to my first server showing you my fail over clustering option so you can manage on first server i did not add management tools on other three servers but uh, i will be using my first server you simply can manage this from any server if you add management tools with failover clustering so uh, if you are not sure what i am talking about please go back to my first video so you will have everything very clear so this is my first server and these are my four nodes s or v1 to s or v4 all are good up and running there is no storage i did not add any storage and i do not need any storage for now for this lab so you're not going to see any disks available so this is the overview of your failover clustering so you can validate cluster as a best practice so you click on validate a cluster follow the visit you can run only the tests you select or you can run all tests uh, which we have done it already in video number 1 so i am using here these selected tests so uh, this procedure is time consuming so i am doing a fast forward so i am sequencing the time here so you don't have to see my waiting so you can view report if you want to this will open in internet explorer ie where you can view it by category we are going to look for ip configuration or valid ip configuration section just briefly take a look on the page so we are good to go ignore these all warnings unless we have some error we have no issues so everything is actually succeeded 
so we are good from this point so we have validated the cluster so we can minimize to move on going back to my sql management studio as a student account these are my databases what you can see right now but we have to bring some databases in create some databases so first we are going to bring in some databases so you can create new databases as well you can have uh, existing databases when you back up you can bring it in or you can restore databases so we will do all so in this way you could have a practice for everything here i am using recovery model right now as simple which is not supported actually for sql always on and high availability groups so you will see that you are going to fix it anyways so this was my database or test one database this is my test two database recovery model leave it as full so you will need to fix first database test one also before you move on you have some more prerequisites which is a backup of your database so let's go and attach one existing database first so you click on add and this is the path you can actually go to the default path or you can take a look at the path from the minus sign from the left move towards your right side here you will see couple of databases so we are going to use blue buffalo that's the first database we are going to import or attach which we have saved previously so i i will ignore the log i will delete that option so you see now here below buffalo student 2013 database now we gonna have another database by restoring from previous backup so you could have here a couple of databases to work with so here you're gonna go and choose your device option and browse to bring in a, another second database which is adventure works 2014.bak so the backup database So we have now, after this, we will have four databases. Here you are looking at the database and the location where you are going to bring this database in. And that is where the database will reside. So now if you go back into your databases, you will see test one, test two, blue buffalo student 2013 and adventure works 2014 now we got four databases so high availability so from here you can start this visit to add a new but you have to wait for the video number three thank you for watching bye